What would he think? What would he think of St. Peter's? What would he think of the wealth and the power and the self-justification and the wheedling apologies? <laughs> the Pope could decide that all this power, all this wealth, this hierarchy of princes and bishops and archbishops and priests and monks and nuns could be sent out in the world with money and art treasures to put them back in the countries that they once raped and violated. They could give that money away and they could concentrate on the apparent essence of their belief. And then I would stand here and say the Catholic Church may well be a force for good in the world. But until that day, it is not. Thank you. Stephen Fry, thank you very much. So you've heard all our four speakers. It's going to be your turn, the audience, next. And um, I'll give you a couple of minutes to um, think about what you want to um, ask our panellists, any questions or com comments you may wish to make. Because I'm going to give you now the result of that vote that you um, all gave when you were coming in here to uh, Central Hall. The motion is the Catholic Church is a force for good in the world. In favour of the motion were 678. Against the motion that the Catholic Church is a force for good was 1,102. Big difference. However, 346 of you were undecided. So, Archbishop and Anne Widdicombe, you're going to have to not over win over the undecided, but actually convert some from the other side. Let's see if we can uh, sway any opinions here amongst all of you by listening to some points that uh, you wish to raise with the panel. And then we're going to ask you to vote again. Now, put your hand up if you want to speak. Uh, a question, Could the lady with the spectacles, yeah. Um, I would like to ask Mr. Hutchins if he is only against the Catholic Church or against all religions. Okay, go back there, the, the lady in the pink. Hi there. Um, this is a question for Christopher Hitchens. Um, many people today feel that we're really living in some kind of moral crisis, and you can see that all around us. Now, if one thing the Catholic Church does do for good, in my opinion, is give us the Ten Commandments, a very basic, obvious way of giving us some kind of moral guidance. Would you not agree with that? <laughs> yeah. the, the lady in front began by asking me, do I reserve this... Uh, condemnation only for the Holy Roman Church and not for other Catholics, for example, like Byzantine Catholics and Protestants and so on. I, I think they're all uh, the same equivalent glimpses of the identical untruth. Now, of the commandments, the first two or three are entirely about fearing the author of the orders. <laughs> entirely about being terrified of someone who you're enjoined to love. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but the idea of compulsory love has always struck me as a bit shady. <laughs> Especially if you're, in, you're ordered to love someone who you absolutely must fear. So the first three are, look out for me and keep at least one day of mine where you'll All be right. terrified full time. Anne Whittacombe, Ten Commandments, firm bedrock of moral teaching. I would have thought it quite obvious that the Ten Commandments set out a blueprint for a moral and successful society. Let us just look at some of them. Honour thy father and thy mother. Think of today's disrespect. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not covet. Tell that to the bankers with their bonuses. Okay, Archbishop, do you want to come in briefly on this? The Ten Commandments are in the Bible, but my father knew it before he became a Christian. All African religions recognized those basic norms of morality. Everybody knows that. All right. Let's, let's take some more questions from the floor. Okay. Um, this is a very simple uh, question for Anne Widdicombe. Um, you might think it may be a naive question. If so, I'd be very happy to be educated. 
Um, why is it wrong for a woman to become a priest, but perfectly acceptable for a woman such as yourself to become an MP? Okay, thanks. I think we're going to go just, just here next. Yeah. Uh, Anne raised a point regarding the billions that are poured into Africa. I respect your faith, I respect the message you give, but why to pass that message on do you need the finery that you wear? Do you need the palace of the Vatican? Okay. Point made. Um, I think we're going to go here. Uh, Archbishop, of which current Roman Catholic policy are you most ashamed? I don't know whether you're serious in that question or you just want to uh, provoke. Because if it, all our, our Catholic policies are not just dreamt overnight by the Pope or anybody. If it is a Catholic policy, it is reasonable. It is, by, it is based on our traditions and scriptures, and there's none about which I'm ashamed. Okay, and the other question about... Uh, and I don't know what billions of... Uh, that he says the Vatican has. The billions of this world, I think, are not in the Vatican. We know where they are, and they are not coming to Africa. On the contrary, Africa has been sucked dry by those people, those multinationals. They are the ones who should be bringing them, our money back to us. You, I think we are, we are targeting the wrong place. I come from Africa, and uh, the funds that come from church agencies for us are very important. And would you come one specific question to you? Yeah. Why not women priests in the Catholic Church? Well, no, the specific question was, why is it not all right for a woman to be a priest, but it is for a woman to be an MP? That exactly. was the specific question. All right. Uh, and I have to say to you, I mean, that really does betray a vast ignorance. <laughs> a member of parliament, male or female, does not stand in persona Christi at the point of consecration. But I don't believe that it is any more possible for a woman to represent Christ at the point of consecration than for a man to be the Virgin Mary. Okay, thanks. Lots of, Very good. Lots of hands up and I really do want to go around everybody. So panel, if you could keep your responses to the point as much as you can. Up there, please. Well, uh, question to Stephen Fry. I'm a Catholic, but I, I like you a lot. <laughs> and then, about, I don't know that the Catholic Church condemns homosexuality as such, only recommends chastity for everybody. <laughs> and then, if I am not married, I should be chaste, either I am homosexual or heterosexual. Okay, all right, thank you. Now. Hi, uh, question for Anne Whittacombe, actually. You accused Christopher Hitchens of judging the Catholic Church by the standards of the time. But surely, the truths in your doctrines are either eternal or they're not. Okay. Stephen Fry, the question about the Catholic Church apparently doesn't condemn homosexuality, that question asked. Uh, well, well, I'm afraid it, it simply does. Um, it, it does condemn it, yes. It, it calls it, a, the, the official word is disorder, but it was refined by the current pontiff, Ratzinger, who called it a moral evil. But on the other hand, we must remember, as the point that was made, is that the church is very loose on moral evils because although they try to accuse people like me who believe in the empiricism and the enlightenment of somehow what they call moral relativism, as if it's some appalling sin, where what it actually means is thought, um, they, um, they, for example, thought that slavery was perfectly fine. Absolutely okay, and then they didn't. And what is the point of the Catholic Church if it says, oh, well, we couldn't know better because nobody else did? Then what are you for? Okay.